So next we're going to talk about the vestibular spinals. Uh, so I think these are pretty sweet tracks, um, of course. They, what these ones specifically do is you're going to take orientation information from your cerebellum and from your semicircular canals in your inner ear. Um, and it kind of, that is information that's telling your body the orientation of your head. And it's going to adjust uh, either your neck or the rest of your body kind of appropriately to help correct your posture and then actually can be used reflexively as well. Um, say they recognize that your head is accelerating forward quickly and you're about to fall. Um, it can have you lift up your head to protect your face and also would have you push your hand out or your, extend your legs to prevent yourself from falling. Um, so before we go through the specific tracks, we'll look at all the cross sections. Um, so there's really not much in the cortex, diencephalon, midbrain, or pons. Uh, within the medulla, though, there's a couple structures we need to recognize. So we're going to have our medial and lateral vestibular nuclei. Um, and if we look on a cross section, these are actually pretty hard to distinguish. I could probably make out that this is medial and this is lateral. But in reality, there's also a superior and inferior vestibular nuclei, and they're kind of wrapped around each other. Um, so it's really hard to pinpoint, but if you were asked in a practical, this would be medial, this would be lateral. Um, the other main structure in the medulla we need to know about is the medial longitudinal fasciculus, or MLF. That's found here right midline in the brainstem. Uh, this is a very important structure. Uh, as it ascends through the brainstem, you'll learn later, it has to do with a lot of eye, eye movement coordination. And as it descends, it's actually going to become the um, medial. So here it's labeled as medial longitudinal fasciculus, but it becomes the medial uh, vestibulospinal tract. So those are synonymous with each other. The lateral vestibulospinal tract is located more anterior and laterally here, right next to our anterior lateral system. Okay, so let's draw these. So the first one we'll talk about is the medial vestibular spinals. Uh, and as I said, um, it's important in these to kind of orient your head and your neck. So these are going to be for bilateral head and neck muscle movement, um, either postural or in a protective way to protect your face. So these will enter. Um, I have this drawn already. So coming from the cerebellum and the semicircular canals, it's going to send inputs into my medial vestibular nucleus. At that point then is going to synapse. So my first synapse is going to be in my medial vestibular nucleus. And then like I said, this one is bilateral. So this will move into the bilateral MLFs and descend. And since this only goes to head and neck, it will only go to cervical spine regions to this area, most medial, which again is the MLF slash medial vestibulospinal tract. Um, once it is moved in that tract, then it's going to go into my anterior motor horns and synapse. So my second nerve body then is in my um, ventral motor horns. And then this point is going to hop on with other motor neurons, say from the cortical spinals, and travel out laterally innervate my bilateral head and neck. Okay. If we look at the lateral vestibular spinals then, these are going to be ipsilateral and these are going to be two of the limbs. Um, I wrote primarily extensors just because again, you're falling and you need to catch yourself or you're tripping, you need to extend your leg. It's usually extensors that you're using, um, but they can do postural correction throughout the body. So again, drawn draw part of this already. From your cerebellum and your semicircular canals, you're going to get the, these afferents coming in. They'll come and synapse within my lateral vestibulonuclear or vestibulonucleus. At this point, it will stay ipsilateral, it will not bifurcate, and it will travel down the spinal cord through my lateral vestibulospinal tract until it reaches the appropriate level, at which point it will go to the ipsilateral ventral motor horn and synapse there. And then like the medial, it will tag along with cortical spinals or other motor um, impulses to travel out to the appropriate muscle. So they're not too complicated. Um, the medial, we'll actually come back to in a little bit because it's actually going to be involved. Um, as I said, this medial longitudinal fasciculus has to do with eye movements. So you can kind of put the whole picture together, which is very cool. Um, but these themselves, they're just both coming from cerebellum and semicircular canals. And the medial pathway, which is for head and neck, is going to bifurcate, travel through my MLF, and then go to cervical spine. Whereas my lateral is going to stay ipsilateral, move through the lateral 
vestibulospinal tract all the way down to its appropriate level, go to the ipsilateral motor horn, and then appropriate muscles.